welcome to a very windy Ascension Island. So I've now currently made it to Fort Hayes, an 1860s fort built to the south of Georgetown. Uh, this current fort is maintained by the museum. So there are certain areas, because the museum's closed, that we won't be able to get access to. But we'll have a look around the outside areas and look at some of the, the features of this mid 19th century fort on Ascension. So the first feature that's remarkably unique is the firing step. A step which is around primarily the rear of the fort to protect the inland approaches from infantry or troop advance. So soldiers could stand here and fire their weapons, their small arms over the, uh, over the parados at the back. Uh, that's very similar to uh, to many castles and medieval fortifications that had a firing step for bows and arrows. We then have a number of the quick firing positions just like we did at Fort Thornton on the other side of the harbour. Here, nice and self-contained, we have the, the ready-use magazines and then steps up to the actual position itself. Uh, this position at the, the rear of the fort, offering some protection out to the south of uh, the south of Georgetown, with uh, one of the one of the many sandy beaches. Coming over, then we have the larger caliber main guns, of which there were two positions, I think, here at Fort Hayes. Still with this remarkable, remarkable cast iron pivot in place. Normally sunk all the way to the hilt, I think, um, or perhaps, perhaps not. So a large caliber coastal artillery gun protecting the southern approaches to Georgetown. As I mentioned earlier, there were no other, uh, there were no other coastal artillery batteries or, or armaments around Ascension. Really here at Georgetown was the, uh, was the only suitable place for ships to land and disembark troops. Now, as we should be able to identify from the from the other forts we've seen, uh, that aperture will come up from the magazine uh, and allow ammunition to be uh, to be loaded from the secure magazines downstairs, either to the ready use lockers to replenish ammunition or straight up to the to the gun itself. Uh, if we continue in this high level, uh, it's a it's a rather complicated fort in terms of of design and levels, but if we stay in this high level um, we can we can rise up to the summit of the fort where the other where the other main gun is. Uh, these are air vents to the magazines down below built into the walls. Unsure whether these are steps actually or 
who are just to give some some structural support but they they make for convenient convenient steps and this wind as we get into evening it's now about half past four in the afternoon sun sets at around 18 30 the winds the winds certainly pick up so here we have the the second of those main gun positions we can see we can see actually i had thought there would have been a mechanical lift but judging by this it would have been block and tackle to bring the to bring the shells up from the, the shell store down below. And right the way up. Right the way up to the main gun position. We can see Fort Thornton in the distance on the north side of Georgetown. We are currently at Fort Hayes. And if I spin us around, we can see up on the hill Fort Bedford, uh, the original uh, late 19th century fort and also the the second, the, the 1903 through to Second World War fort up on the hill. Not all active at the same time, but certainly in this in this concentration of formidable um, a formidable series of fortifications. So we'll take a bit of time now and we'll have a look at some of the other features around Fort Hayes. Now this is rather remarkable. You may have seen it in the background of some of the shots already. But this is a semaphore signal station. Various messages could have been communicated using the handles, which in turn would have changed the position of the arms, which would have been on top, to communicate to ships, um, potentially whether it was whether it was safe to land or whether to identify whether they were they were potentially um, friendly or what their what their purpose harbouring here was. some really original features. Now, moving down here, we have an, a, a, a vent, a, 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 a chimney, essentially. Um, I doubt that it is original to this particular location but it it certainly wouldn't uh, wouldn't be surprising if this was on top of some of the magazine air vents um, just to, to enable that airflow so finally getting out of the wind we have we have this peculiar room here. Now we have a main gun position to our right. We have just descended from a gun position over here. Um, my initial thought, uh, and I need to try and verify, is but this is a this is a crew shelter for the crews of those two of those two guns. Uh, there are some there are some hooks on the wall and if we look at uh, and this this is quite a an unusual thing so the hooks the hooks themselves are at an angle and if we look at three hooks on this side one two three and if we look at the corresponding three hooks on the far side they're at the opposite end of the room and quite often in crew shelters if guns were were uh, crewed by sailors they would sleep in hammocks. So I think that these hooks were for three hammocks to be strung up at an angle to get the longest possible distance they could out of this building. So I think this is a protected crew shelter. Crews could um, could, could rest in here and when they called up for action to the guns, um, they could have done so. Or indeed this was for, for crews that weren't firing the guns, 
but they would have sheltered here if they if they then had to go out and operate the shell lifts um, to bring more ammunition up from the magazine. They probably wouldn't have helped them outside um, during normal firing. So yeah, a, what I believe is a is a lovely a crew shelter. Now let's try and breathe the wind and we'll go outside and have a look around. So if we start here, this would have um, been access to the magazine for this particular gun. We can see the hook uh, in the ceiling there, block and tackle, most likely to lower the ammunition down into the magazine itself. Um, we have the gun, gun position up here and we have that large pivot just as we saw uh, in the first position when we came into Fort Hayes. Unfortunately I'm, I'm now shooting, it's either I shoot into the sun or into the wind, so I'll try and do my best to minimise disruption from both. And that uh, big bank of earth to our right, that was the crew shelter that was the crew shelter that we've just, just come out of. So we can see it's reasonably well protected. We can see a con concrete roof and the rest of it's been, been covered with, uh, with volcanic stone as well, which, which I can't see offered, offered too much protection. So we'll move on down into the inside of the fort and look at some of the lower levels. One thing that's often missed in forts like this is welfare facilities is toilets and here is a now what looks like a, a bit of a replica um, may have originated but but this is a one of the toilets inside Fort Hayes so it looks like that in the absence of plumbing buckets chemical toilets and buckets would have been used by the by the personnel serving here so very rudimentary I don't think I don't think there were barrack facilities within inside the fort troops would have been barracked or billeted, out, uh, billeted outside and coming here to to man the fort in the event of uh, of that emergency The magazine at Fort Hayes is actually part of the museum and houses the exhibits. Well, I don't think it will be open because the museum is closed. And yeah, indeed, it's fortunately it's locked, so we won't be able to get into the magazine today. But I've just noticed more of these hooks. So the very two hooks on this side and two hooks on that side. See them again, they're they're angled in my opinion to take a to take a hammock should should crew need to to shelter. So while there may not have been accommodation here, uh, the fort may be able to um, may have been able to house some some troops if if the fort was under attack. So just here we can see the, the totally unusual levels of this fort. Indeed, we're not even at, at ground level. If you saw the, the approach video up to the entrance. So we had to walk up quite a hill to get to those doors, then through the doors and up, up various other levels. Um, so we're in the, we're in the mid-level, which is, which is where the magazine is. The gun's been up the, up the upper level. Uh, a number of items actually on the ground here that have, have been preserved. And earlier on at, at a number of forts there were remnants of of these ammunition lifting cranes or daffets I think they're called. And here is one. So we can see this the spigot at the bottom, which would have gone in a in a plate at the lower part of the wall. Probably it could have been been clamped collar around here, holding it to the wall. 
And then we have various metal work for, for block and tackle. Here's the, the top part of that davit. So these would have been, been over the, um, the holes just below the magazines, or sorry, just above the magazines, and would have been able to hoist, uh, hoist the ammunition down into the magazine. Uh, if you're wondering what this cylinder is, I believe this is the top of uh, one of the rangefinder pillars. Um, so this has come from, I think this has come from up at, uh, at one of the upper levels beside the gun. Uh, and the range, rangefinder would have, been, would have been mounted on that. This little, little store here, I'm unsure of the purpose once again. This may have been one of the laboratories for ammunition testing, as it's just by the entrance to one of the original magazines. But in here is a little exhibit of or a store of some pieces of equipment. It looks like an old, uh, an old generator, possibly a yeah, possibly just an old an old petrol engine. Uh, bizarrely, a, a dentist's chair and an old, uh, very rudimentary operating or surgeon's table stored in here. Unlikely anything to do with the fort. Um, my, under my understanding of the, the plan of this fort is, um, is, is through here we have access to, um, to a magazine and to stores that's on the same level as the artifacts over here and there's just one large um, one large magazine um, for to serve all the guns with their with their relevant uh, shell and cartridge cartridge lifts uh, the shed now there were a number of there were a number of maxim guns housed on ascension and it's possible that the the guns these were on on wheeled carriages there's a, a very nice photograph of of crews in the early 20th century firing firing one of those guns uh, so it's possible that that was the gun shed for the for the maxims inside the inside the fort for security um, and could be used for for defense of the of the fort and the island if need be so and yeah unfortunately we haven't been able to get into the magazines of fort hayes um, but we have had a had a good look around the outside. 